How's it going, reef keepers? Quick disclaimer before I start talking about this. I don't know anything about microbial life in a reef tank, so everything I'm gleaning is from Salem Clemens on Reef Recap. But uh, on Reef Recap recently, Salem Clemens was talking about um, like corals on the sand bed and what the impact of setting like a coral down on the sand bed might be considering that the microbial life that's on a coral or its skeleton is a whole different type of microbial life than what lives in and on the sand bed. And I think it was a question from a, from a viewer that he fielded, but what he said was really interesting to me um, and kind of humorous. He said that basically he envisions like a D-Day scenario. So like, you know, students of history will understand what that means. Like the allied invasion of Europe, right? Nazi Europe. Like, that's what he envisions in his mind <laughs> is going on when a coral is set down on the sand bed and these two like totally disparate types of like microbial families are now in direct contact with one another and in competition. So that got me thinking about, you know, I've got I've got coral in the sand bed, right? And so like it got me thinking, you know, what what was the history, you know, to date? And what have I noticed with my coral on the sand bed? So first, this is this is the the one bit of coral that sticks out to me. So this is an alveopora frag. And this alvey frag, it is interesting. <laughs> After I heard that and I thought about it, when I go ahead and you know clean my tank every week, I raise that frag up. It's on a little bit of rock that's about this deep underneath. I lift it up and kind of shake away the sand so it's elevated out of the sand bed and it seems to instantly do better. Of course, it's right next to the burrow of my pistol shrimp. So over the course of the week, as the pistol shrimp pushes more sand up against like the actual base of the coral and like fills in all the area around the rock, I do notice that the coral starts to flag a little bit. And so, you know, I've noticed this pattern and not really thought about, you know, in my in my mind, not being a Salem Clemens at all. I'm looking at it like, ah, uh, you know, maybe it's bothered by its, you know, polyps touching the sand bed and when they're in the current. But it could very well be this D-Day scenario that he's described, which is really interesting, you know. Um, and it kind of makes me want to glue another piece of rock underneath of it and kind of jack it up. Um, similarly... This elegance coral, I know you guys can't tell because the elegance coral is always, you know, fully engorged, but I actually, you know, a lot of people will take the little like cornucopia horn skeleton of a, an elegance coral and just lay it on the sand bed. And in fact, if you look on reef forums, you know, people will ask, what do I do? What do I do with this thing? Do I mount it on the rock? Do I? And I think I've read that most people will say, oh no, just, you know, put it on the sand bed. And I recall years ago now, five years ago, when I got this elegance coral, I took that little cornucopia horn after reading, you know, on reef forums that you should just set it on the sand bed. I set it on the sand bed and initially it didn't do very well. So I was like, I don't know. I noticed that it was getting moved around a little bit in the current. And so I took, again, a little piece of, of live rock and, and, you know, chopped a chunk of live rock off and glued that cornuco cornucopia horn to the top of the chunk of live rock. So underneath here, there's actually a chunk of live rock about that high that keeps the skeleton of the coral out of the sand bed, right? Now, again, the cor clearly it's touching the sand bed. I mean, this is like, that. this is a, a bottom coral from what I understand. Um, you know, elegance coral do like lower regions of the reef. So I'm sure it's, I don't know, you know, more resilient, but it's interesting also, like, you know, I noticed it doing not great initially until I kind of, again, jacked it up like a little bit out of the sand to keep the, to keep the skeleton out of the sand. Now, other coral that I have down here, like this piece, um, green star polyp, I'm pretty sure you could grow it in a mud puddle with table salt seriously like it, i've never had a problem with green star polyp growing out um but this little bit this was kind of an unintended experiment so this is a little bit of anacropora and you can see the remaining bit of it right there and what happened is i don't know if you guys know this i didn't until it happened but um montipora eating uh nudibranchs 
they also eat Anacropora, which is wild to me, but they started eating the Anacropora. And so I broke off the majority of it from right here. I broke it off and put it down here and just kind of tossed it in the corner thinking like, okay, all those nudibranx, you know, they'll just, they'll just be over here in the corner. I was waiting for my RAS to arrive, which seemed to solve the nudibranch problem, by the way. Um, but I have noticed, interestingly, that they had just infested this piece. So the bit that's here, and it, this has been moved all around. At first, I thought it was because the light was hitting the tips right here. This frag, though, has been bounced around. Every time I do the, the magnet on the glass, it gets bounced around. And slowly, the bits that do tend to sit, like it's got like a, an angle it likes to sit at, even when it gets tossed around, the bits that were in contact with the sand, even if they were in contact with light day to day, those bits died off rather quickly. And I got, you know, it's a tough coral, but I've got this little bit hanging on here, you know, this little tip, and it's the part that is the most elevated out of the sand. So again, it is getting the most light also, but it makes me think like <laughs> Salem, Salem's great to listen to. You should listen to Re Reef Recap because there's no way I'm ever gonna understand the stuff that he talks about at the level of depth that he discusses it at. I, I can't access that, but he gives these little like metaphors and analogies and stuff as he goes. I don't even know if he, he knows he's doing it. The guy's just a good teacher. And when he said the D-Day thing, I was like, that's fascinating. I have corals in the sand bed, let me think back. So I understand that there's corals like, you know, scolies and stuff that are just like typically sand bed corals, right? Um, I, th I think he said his reaction for like scolies and stuff would even be to like prop them up on some kind of, you know, low layer of live rock. Um, but it just got me thinking like, and I wonder what you guys think about it. It's, this is not like a thing I'm taking a position on or anything. I just figured I'd kind of recount what I have noticed, you know, with my own corals that are down in the sand bed and kind of, kind of pose it to all of my subscribers and just say, Hey, you know, if you watch this video, what... What have you found to be true of corals in the sand bed? Because despite the fact that I feel like, you know, I'm a total numbskull when it comes to like the micro level biome of reef tanks, it's something I'm just scratching the surface of. I am really curious about like, I'm, I'm curious about that whole side of reef keeping. And I'm, I'm trying to listen to every reef recap and catch all these little bits of it that Salem boils down to a level that I can understand. And now I'm kind of looking to you guys, like I want some feedback, like what do you guys think about corals in the sand bed? What have you found? Are, do certain things always succeed for you? Have certain things always failed when they hit the sand? You know, um, the D-Day thing is just fascinating to me. So I want to know what, what your experience has been. Anyway, um, just stuff I've been bouncing around in my skull and uh, hope you guys are having a great week. Have a good one.